What is up guys? Welcome back to episode four of the education series. Now the last video we covered was potentially the best training split, um, which is the full body training split. The one that I urged the majority of you to consider trying. Now, once you've exhausted that split, and I'm gonna to explain to you where that would come about, where do you then move to? And the answer to that I believe is the upper lower training split. And the reason for that is because we can still keep the frequency extremely high when we use upper lower rest, upper lower rest. So the, the amount of times that we're exposing our body to that level of stimulus across a two week period and then over a year is still incredibly high versus a split training part. But it allows us more focus on what we're trying to do in each individual session. Because I said in the previous video that you're gonna reach a point in that, in that kind of journey with that training split where you're gonna look at your logbook and you're gonna be like, wow, that's an incredibly hard session because for me to progress my lifts on everything, it's gonna be super demanding, especially the back end of the session. Like, so let's say for example that you, you're doing a full body training and you've progressed all of your upper body lifts, but mentally and physically, that's taken a lot out of you. And then you come to your legs and you're like, I'm spent, I'm just spent, I've got nothing. Despite that, you push hard and you actually just find an inability to progress your lifts on the back end of the session. That is the moment where you then need to move to upper lower training. Now, for some of you, the reason why will be more because of your inability to be accurate with the factors that influence your recovery, like we previously talked about. So don't just immediately rush to upper lower training. Focus on trying to stick with the full body training split and improving every area that will contribute to success of your overall ability to build muscle. So those sleep, hydration, etc., etc. Um, once you know you've come to the end of that training split, which I would say can be around for at least a year, if you're already fairly developed, you might stall out after six months. If you are way too developed to have necessarily done it, you'll know after three months. But again, the large majority will be able to use this split for a year. And in that period, you will have made a huge amount of progress, but you'll reach a point where the back end of the session will then be impossible to keep going with. Great, that's, that's job done. That's what, that's, when, when I hear that, I, I literally, I wanna hug someone. Because I, in my head I'm like, you've executed that split for a year, you've exposed yourself to all that level of stimulus, you've progressed your lifts astronomically, you've probably gained 10 to 15 pounds of lean tissue in that year. That, that's a realistic number, which is probably more than you've put on in the whole time that you've been faffing around with bodybuilding. And you've trained so hard that now you cannot progress your lifts at the back end of the session. You literally deserve an, an applause, in my opinion, when that happens. Because you could not have done anything better. You have done everything to a T. So that's not actually a failure at that point where you then can't progress your lifts there. That's a huge, huge success. A huge win. And to me, that's then like the doors opening to upper lower. You've progressed from level one to then whatever we want to call the next level. So the doors open, you walk through them. Whereas I know a lot of you have spent too long a time with just misdirection. And again, I understand why that occurs because mentally the full body training is hard and there'll be some days where you're tired and you're like, Do you know what, I just want an arm day. Okay, that's cool. Like train to what is fun. Like that's a big component of this too, is having fun. But like I said in the other ones, I also know a, a, a lot of you, fun is progress. To me, there is nothing more fun than progress, like in any aspect of life. To me, progress is absolutely everything. And, and I, like, I like to make, I need to make progress in everything that I do. And I reflect on it constantly. Um, to the point where it's, it's basically an obsession. Um, and whether that's healthy or not, 
I don't care. It's, it's what I find fun. So for those of you that find progress fun, that full body training is going to be fucking awesome. So you can run with that. Now, once those doors have opened to upper lower, how does that look? Like I said, upper lower rest, upper lower rest, upper lower rest. We're now gonna take those first parts of the, of the upper body session and we're just gonna add more volume to them. And this is where the idea of the load and the back off set was kind of born, which I both was happy about and regretted at the same time because it, it took some of the training that we do a little out of context in the idea that we only do load and back off, which is wrong, but we'll talk about that in a second. So let's say we, we do our, our upper body session and we do our chest press first, our shoulder press second, our tricep press first, a third, and then we do our lateral, and then we move on to our back work, and then we come back to our arm work. Now all we're gonna do for those pieces is we're gonna add two sets in total. So we're gonna add a set, and we're gonna then come to a total of two sets. How do those rep ranges look? The first one will still be the heavy rep range, like you were previously doing, the, your uh, six to 10. And then the second rep range, could then be, it doesn't necessarily have to be the 15 to 25, but we can say it will be a, a 12 to 20, around that. I, I believe that's a good number. In previous videos, I may have said, then it could just be a 10 to 15, and it can be. But my point being is, it's just a, a decrease in the weight, where we then get more reps. Now, once you've reached the upper end, of the rep range, that's where then I want you to jump forward considerably more in the loading to reset yourself to the lower portion of the rep range. So let's look at an example of how that would look for one exercise. So let's say we do something that, that falls on the lower end of rep range uh, for a chest move, and it'll be a six rep uh, incline Smith press. So for that, that would be for me maybe like four and a half plates. Now, over the period of progression, I might go four and a half plates and add like a biscuit, like a, a 0.5 or a 125, and then build that up to seven reps. And then over time, I might add a little bit more, but then get to eight reps. And that will eventually max out where I do like four and a half plates, and then I've managed to build like 3.75 kilos of weight progress, but I've also managed to get that up to 10 reps. Absolutely amazing, job done. That may have taken me, Three months to do that, quite a long time, but that probably be three months to do that, probably about right, maybe four months. Now, when I jump that weight up to then knock myself back to the six reps, I'm gonna maybe jump whole five kilos at once. And then that'll put me right back to six reps and then I'm gonna start that process again. But after I've done that first set that was like, four and a half plates plus the extras, and I got like six at the start point. Now for my second set, all I'm gonna do is lower it to, initially you're not gonna know where to lower it. Initially, you're just gonna have to just make an estimation, but I would probably move mine down to, if I was doing four and a half, I'd probably move mine down to like three and a half, or maybe even three, and then I would get 16, 17 reps, and I'd fall in the, in the area where I, I'm, I'm shooting to fall. And then, again, I logbook that until it's, it's upper end, which can be 20 reps. And you can have wider rep range parameters or narrower rep range parameters in terms of your low end reps based on what feels good for you. But I wouldn't go too heavy just out of safety. So I wouldn't advise doing doubles and triples unless you're really, really, really used to doing them in the sense that you used to be a power lifter and then you've wanted to move into more of a bodybuilding specific split and you're used to exposing yourself to super heavy loads. Okay, and you enjoy doing them. Okay, great. Doubles and trebles, if you wanna put some of those in, great. Don't do loads of them because you are eventually, as you know, gonna run into issues where you, you pick up unnecessary knocks. Where you, it's, it's inevitability if you're doing doubles and trebles all the time that you're gonna pick up injuries. And nothing slows progress more than being injured. If you cannot lift, you cannot make progress. And kind of one of the notions that we really focus on at this point is that progress is everything. So your rep range selection has to reflect your ability to be able to execute your programming over a long period of time. 
So then let's work in some rep ranges that are suitable. Like I loved heavy lifting. I loved doubles and trebles. So I used to do probably more of them than I should have done. And I, I certainly picked up injuries as a result. Um, especially in the last year where I was training, I, I tore a few things just because I, I, I love training in that area. But that's, again, that's me moving off of necessarily what is best for me to more do what I love doing. And that's no problem with doing that. Because we fall on the same idea of what training split do you pick? Because if you love split body part, do split body part. I'm never ever gonna tell someone to not do something that they love doing. Even if it's potentially stupid and risky, you just have to understand the shortcomings that can come about through those decisions. And as long as you do, that's fine. So that's where we're at with, with the rep range parameters. Now, we don't need to rotate between some aspects of heavy and low because we have split rep ranges for each exercise. The only thing that we need to focus on now is making sure that we still have a suitable number of variations for each training session. And for upper lower training, I would advise having three individual training sessions. So three uppers and three lowers, and these are what I want you to work your way through until you revisit your previous training session. So I want you to go upper one, lower one, rest. Upper two, lower two, rest. Upper three, lower three, rest. And then I'm gonna come back to upper one and I'm gonna look at my logbook and I'm gonna progress those lifts. Progression is everything. Progression with standardized form is everything. I have to caveat that standardized form part all the time because I know for a fact that I'm gonna get tagged in people's progress with poor form. And, 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 and just remember guys, we have to create the internal stimulus. So just like in the previous video where I talked about that win from the session or not, as soon as your form loses its standardization, that's not a win. And we've all been there because we get excited at the notion of taking that progress mid-set and alter our form. It's normal, it's human nature, but call yourself on that. Because if we're gonna make progress, if we, if we want to make progress, we have to be strict with ourselves. So what we've covered there, we've covered the volume for the training sessions. We've covered the frequency at which we're doing them. We've covered the amount of variations of each training split. We've covered when to progress from full body to upper lower. I think we've covered everything. This one is, is a fairly quick one because we don't have to go into too much. But I hugely advise you watching the full body video first because again, the, the, a lot of these videos are heavily interlinked because I'm doing it as an education series. So if you really want to learn my methods as a whole, I advise watching video one because it's gonna give you an introduction into the way that I think in general. And then video two will kind of explain how these training sessions are interlinked and, and how the volume adjusts based on the frequency. And then as we get into these, we then delve into the specifics of how each training split looks. So again, any questions, please ask. I'm here for all of the comments. We've had some crazy ones. I'm all for it. Hit me with your craziest comments, guys. They, uh, they definitely brighten up my day a little bit. So I hope this is helpful. Subscribe, notifications, comment, all of it. I appreciate you a lot. I'll see you soon.